Hi, before we get started, I just want to apologise for the audio quality in this episode. We were having some issues with our connection and because of this our call quality isn't as great. Hopefully this hasn't affected the episode too much, so let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Inspect, a show about web design and web development. In today's episode, we're going to be following on from our last episode about semantics, and we're going to go into uh, the different types of buttons that you see all over the web pages. Well, probably one of the most used elements that you see on web pages uh, in different shapes and sizes, and they all have different uses, really. We're going to split this into sort of three main uses for buttons. Uh, the first being to submit some sort of form whether that's a, a contact form or perhaps a search search bar, or it could be you know to submit a, uh, a post to Facebook or to Twitter, for example. Um, another type is to perform some sort of action on a page, whether that's like uh, in an app like Gmail, it could be to delete your emails or uh, to make your text bold, for example, that could be a button. And the third type is going to be navigational buttons. So a button which would say sort of click here to go to another page. And um, yeah, that would basically take you to another page on a website, some sort of navigation. So um, yeah, okay, if you want to take it away and um, talk about the first type, and we can we can uh, go over the different versions of submitting forms and, and the submit buttons. Um, so yeah, so like the first type we've got is um... Uh, submitting forms so we've got various different types of uh, buttons all over um, a, a web page of your website so one of them would be like your search uh, search field with a whether it's an icon in there or a search button which will execute um, a search command to search your website um, and then various you know but different types of buttons on a contact form or inquiry form and you know, those buttons the most obvious button being um, submit um, to submit the form um, and then usually these forms are pretty big. They'll come with a like reset button, which will allow you to just reset or clear the form. Um, and then sometimes maybe like um, on one of the uh, most popular sites, you see this um, um, upload button would be like a, a recruitment website where you're going to upload your CV or upload a file or something like that. So that's another type of button on the form. I think there are three sort of buttons that I sort of come across quite a bit on these forms. Um, so yeah, they're like um, yeah submission kind of buttons that you find on the forms. Yeah, and in terms of the actual HTML elements that you see with these types of form buttons, um, there, there's two real types. There's a there's the input, and then there's the button element, and uh, both of those come in three different types. So you can have an input type submit, input type button, or an input type reset, and the same three types apply to the button element as well. Um, and I suppose that's that's one of the nuances of, of these buttons really is knowing which one to use, when to use an input element and when to use a button element. Um, and it all depends on your actual use case really, the content of that button. If it's just the, if it's going to be a, a line of text, like just a, a single word, and it's going to be used in the inside a form to submit that form, then the best one to go for is an input type submit. Um, yeah, when you do put an input or a button element inside a form tag, um, I think by default the the type is set to submit anyway. So they they will you don't need to necessarily specify that if it's inside a form. If it's outside of a form, then uh, the action can vary based on browsers. Um, so it's best to be a bit more specific about what you want that button to do then. And then um, you get. With both of those elements, uh, you also get the type equals button as well. And essentially what that does, is it turns off the submit um, capabilities of that button. So even if it's inside a form, it won't necessarily submit. Again, there are some nuances with browsers, but um, those types of buttons, so an input type button or a just a plain button element, um, I tend to use those where they're going to perform some sort of action um, so it could be like maybe launching a launching a modal pop up or toggling some sort of uh, text, perhaps uh, maybe showing a navigation on a mobile menu. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, the last the last bit you just said, where you know toggling modals, um, are revealing um, are toggling uh, sections of a website on and off, and things like that. Yeah, that makes 
perfect sense, like the navigation toggle, launching a mode. I, I think um, the way they rendered in, in Bootstrap's the kind of um, format that I'm used to, uh, because I'm not really coding a lot of this stuff um, you know, from scratch. I don't find a need to do that. So it's really interesting to, to pick up on this, uh, uh, on this topic to like, figure out when's the best time to use uh what were the best use cases for these buttons so like even for me this is a you know it's, it's an eye opener um with the, the amount of um research reading that i've done done into it and kind of like trying to make sense of you know the the input types um and the use cases and you know is it a bad way to use it is it a right way to use it so i think um just going on from um like because i'm i'm really kind of like going along with the bootstrap sort of model and how everything's rendered within within this sort of framework um so you're probably coding this stuff from scratch uh, more so than i am so i think you're probably finding uh more understanding the use the use cases more than i am i think yeah, I think um, the, the the biggest question that I always have to sort of ask myself when when I need a button on the page is uh, what is this button going to do? Um, is the button going to be submitting a form or not? And if it's not, mm. uh, or if it sits outside of a form, then I'll tend to reach for the button element um, first. Right. And just generally, uh, the button element, I prefer it anyway because it allows you to put HTML inside of it as well. So... You know, uh, it's very common to see these days where you've got a button with an icon inside it, or you could you could even have an an image um, act as a button as well. Uh, so that's although it is possible to do that with an input element, it uh, requires a, a bit more CSS um, and it use it requires the use of background images to basically get those images rendered. Whereas with a button element, you can have it in your front end uh, in your HTML markup. Uh, you know, you could put an SVG in there. You could put just images in there. You can, I think, you can put almost any any HTML um, inside of a button element. Whereas an input uh, is self closing, so all it has is um, is a value, and that value it only accepts a text string. Yeah. So, what's your what's your thoughts on um, links being styled as buttons? So, for example, I'll give you an example of. Um, where where this is used at the moment on on a, like a website that I'm that I'll be working on. So at the bottom of the website or throughout the sections of the website, there'll be a call to action, sort of like um, a section. And by default, the a lot of the time, like a, a call to action widget within the page builder will display it as a button, right? Mm -hmm. Where whereas other times we've got an option to um style a link as a button so there's two different methods there and i've found both of them working you know on wordpress using a page builder using a like a third party widget that's part of the actual theme um there's an interesting one there so you know you know is that a right or wrong but styling a link as a button i, I think um, it's it's not know. a it's not terrible to style a link as a button um but as long as that link is try is not trying to behave as a button, it's trying to put behave as a link. In turn, and what I mean by that is that it's doing some sort of navigation, um, because the the styling it as a button is purely going to be an aesthetic thing. But the link should still behave as a link. Um, I'll give an example for this um, on my own personal website, which is ajcarwell.com. On the homepage, I've got um, just a little little like summary of what content you'll see on my website so some you know some blog posts a little little bit about me um and then at the bottom i've got a what looks like a button and it just says get in touch um but it is a uh, an anchor link look to you know styled as a button um with a class button on it and all it does is takes you to the contact page so it's a navigation item there uh, it wouldn't make sense for me to put an input button there or even a button element because the the context isn't quite right whereas if i had a contact form which i don't but when i go to the contact form even though the button on there may look exactly the same as the one on the home page i would expect to use an input or a button element instead of an anchor there 
because it's just because of the context so that's the sort of hard hard and fast rule of it is if you're doing some sort of navigation yeah you should be using an anchor um with a href on it because uh, an input or a button element neither of them accept a href as any of the attributes so if you were to use a button the only way to actually have some sort of navigation is to use like an on-click event and that's when you're getting javascript involved which you shouldn't really need to that's right things. yeah and you need to avoid that yeah yeah, I mean, you don't need to avoid it, but, you know, you need to just think, is it necessary? Um, it's just a bit, you know, it's jumping through hoops for the sake of just navigating to another page. You're better off just using a link um, styled as a button if you want it to look like a button. Um, the bit where it gets a bit funny is when you've got a button that looks like a, looks like a link. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a great choice. Um, but then I guess, again, it comes down to your own design and your site design if you have a form where the button needs to look like text then uh, it makes sense to use a button element or a, or an input element and use css to make it look like an like a hyperlink yeah yeah because if you look at just say ios for example um mm. especially since ios 7 when they had the massive change in in design a lot of the buttons now just look like text labels um now obviously they're they're like native ios controls but if you were to mimic that style on the web it would it would look like a hyperlink but it would still make more semantic sense to use an input or a, or a button element yeah i think um the you know design plays a huge factor in this as well and you know the fact that your hyperlinks should stand out and not look like a button because they're um the purpose behind the hyperlink is, you know, is to take you to another page. Um, uh, and where, whereas your your buttons, your call to action should stand out a bit more and should be a bit more uh, obvious and, you know, giving the user a sense of, you know, okay, this button, once you've clicked this, is going to take you away from, you know, the regular content of, uh, of the website and take you somewhere where you, you know, perform a action, um, you know, whether that's filling in a form or, you know, um, tapping to call, things like that. Yeah, so I guess yeah, it does. It does come down to the design, really, whether you should, whether you should style, uh, change the styling of a button to a link or a link to a button. Um, yeah, it, it, and in terms of just the the input and the button element, applying CSS to those two, just to those two, um, by default they do look fairly similar. Um, the browser will render them almost identical. There are some slight differences. Um, but when it comes to CSS, I think it's a lot easier to to reset the styles of a button element than it is of an input. Um, but you know, you got Bootstrap and most of the other sort of front end frameworks. They've all got styling in place where you know you can stick a a, a button or a BTN class on either of those uh, or on a hyperlink, and you know they've all been styled to look look and work in the exact same way. So. Um, once you've got that that sort of design choice out of the way, where you can make all of those three three options look exactly the same, that's where you now need to start thinking about you know the actual use case of the button now and uh, use the one that's most sort of semantically correct. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the only thing to really watch out for is that the button element um, is not compatible with um, older versions of IE. I believe IE six and seven. Mm. So IE eight onwards should be okay. And um, mm. also, when you're using a an input element versus a button element, if it's not inside a form, then some br browsers behave differently uh, as to what happens when that button gets clicked. Um, like some browsers may actually just uh, do a post back on the form. Um, others may just completely ignore it. So best thing is to, you know, use it in the correct place. If you're trying to submit a form, use an, an input or a button element with type submit on it to submit the form. If you're using it outside of the form and you're just trying to do some sort of action uh, like within the page without submitting any data, then you probably want to use type button on either of those two and if you're doing some sort of navigation then um stick with an a, an anchor and um style it up as a button if you need to 
there's another um scenario that i come across using bootstrap and that's where your um anchor link has a role equal to button um to do with your accessibility so have you come across that have you have you, do you use that anywhere when you're um you know working on your projects um generally i you know especially if i'm copying and pasting text from bootstraps documentation uh i know it's on there uh, by default and uh, yeah, like you said, for accessibility, that's there to let a screen reader know that you're using a anchor that's styled to look like a button. You, you know, it's, it needs to behave as a button, and not necessarily just as a as a link. Yeah. Um, if I was just writing my own code, it's to be honest, it's normally a bit of an afterthought. Um, but uh, yeah, if I was going to do a, a an accessibility audit. I guess, or, you know, just put in some extra effort to make sure that site is accessible. Then, um, yeah, I would put roll button on, um, especially if that button is, well, the anchor is not behaving in the most obvious way. Mm. If it is, if it's behaving just as an anchor, then I don't think it's necessarily needed. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I, I don't really actively uh, add roll equals button on because then you start getting into the whole, um, you know, then, then there's loads of different ARIA attributes that you can add to buttons as well. You could say like whether it's pressed as well, um, exactly. which you yeah. can then start toggling uh, with JavaScript um, to let the screen reader know exactly what the state of that button is as well. So I would, mm. um, yeah, I would only really reserve that effort for uh, if it's really needed. Um, but I think if you just leave off yeah. roll equals button, I don't think uh, it doesn't make any difference to the way the button performs. Obviously, it's just uh, it's purely for accessibility. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's um, you know I think it's you take it in a case by case um, you know scenario where you know if you've got a particular project which requires that when you know the the user base or the audience are using you know tools like screen readers and things like that. I think that's where it's going to be a bit more, um, you know, that's where you think about it a little bit more uh, beforehand. But yeah, because I come across that and I always thought to myself, is there really, is that really necessary for this project I'm working on? But it's there and I'll just leave it there, um, especially when I'm working on Bootstrap. Yeah. yeah, I think the Bootstrap documentation for their buttons uh, is a pretty good place to start um, to to find out about the different types of button usage and you know which elements to use and uh, they do explain a little bit about you know why a button is used over an input um so what i'll do is i'll put links to the bootstrap documentation in the show notes uh there's also a couple of uh, good stack overflow questions and answer threads uh, mm. which explain the different uses um and essentially explain like um where where button where the button element is not compatible with old browsers and some of the gotchas that you need to watch out for. Um, so I'll put a few more links in the show notes, so check those out. And um, yeah, just be careful about what type of buttons you're using and where you're using them, and uh, always remember to um, use them in the right context, and then uh, think about styling as a bit of an afterthought. Don't let the styling of, of the element be your driving factor. Let the actual context uh, be defined first. Mm. Yeah, all right. And on that note, that's probably uh, everything we've got on buttons um, for this semantic episode. Maybe we should do a little series of these where we do a little deep dive into certain elements, you know, maybe the different types of inputs. Yeah, I think so, because there's so much. There's, there's you know, there's, there's loads that we can go into. Um, yeah, definitely. I think these need to be touched on a bit more in uh, more detail. Yeah, things like, you know, whether to put a text inside a div or whether it should be inside a paragraph. If, inside a div should should text always be in a in a container that is intended for text for example so yeah there's some there's some different options that we could think about um before we go you got any recommendations or anything cool that you've seen this week that you want to share um it's just something that i um came across but i was actually subscribed to it um i think last year the year before um it's a app called blinkist um, I think it's uh, Blinkist.com. Uh, you just sign up, register there. And what they do is they basically um, just get people in the habit of reading um, a bit more. And they kind of like, it's, it's all um, um, non-fiction, like short fact-based kind of articles. And um, what they do is they kind of condense larger reading into small, smaller segments. And it just kind of helps you to get into the habit of reading. And I just kind of like picked it up again, resubscribed and started reading. 
Um, so that's one for you guys out there, Blinkist, uh, Blinkist.com. Let's get on that when you get a moment. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to recommend an app this week. Um, I've uh, been using this one for a while. It's a photo editing app called Darkroom. Um, I believe it's iOS only. Um, it's not free. It's a uh, I think it was nine ninety nine, but uh, it's it's definitely worth it. It uh, it's got really granular controls over over photo editing. Um, it's got loads of preset filters, and uh, it allows you to create your own filters as well. Once you've once you're happy with the look and feel of a photo, um, it allows you to do, uh, to edit the sort of histogram curves and. Uh, nice. It's just it's just a brilliant uh, photo editing app. It's on par with um, I would say Lightroom, um, but obviously this one's called Darkroom. Uh, yeah, it's not, and uh, although although it's a paid app, you know at least you don't need a subscription to sort of the Creative Cloud to use this one. So um, yeah, I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. It allows you to yeah, it's just it's just a really good app. Um, one thing I do like about it is as well is it lets you quickly change the dimensions of an image to, uh, well, not sorry, not the dimensions, change the canvas of an image. So suppose you've got a rectangular image and you're trying to set it as your your profile, uh, you know, your avatar profile photo, which normally needs to be a, a square image. Um, you can hit a couple of buttons and um, what it does is the app adds padding to your image to put it onto a square canvas and then you can set the background color of that canvas as well to uh to sort of match the image as well so you can um nice. you know make your photos the ideal canvas size for different social networks and stuff like that so that's a really good feature brilliant and then just the actual controls you know the editing controls there there's just got so many so it's a really good app uh probably the best photo editing app i've used so get on it check it out cool all right, nice one. Um, yeah, so if you uh, if you like this episode, do hit subscribe in your podcast player and consider leaving us a review or a rating on uh, Apple Podcasts or wherever you can. You can follow our Twitter account at InspectFM and you can check out the show notes for this episode and all the archive of the previous episodes on our website, inspect.fm, where you can also find links to our personal Twitter accounts and so forth. We've also got a Discord set up and also a Slack community. Details of those are on the website. Um, so yeah, it would be great if you could jo- join those and uh, get into some more conversations and discuss some future episodes and yeah, build a bit of a community. And on that note, I'll uh, catch you later. See you later.